Trenbolon thickens the skin. And that's why it shouldn't be used at higher dosages during a contest prep when you haven't thinned your skin with prolonged dieting. Welcome to Vigorous Trimbaloni Sandwich and let's continue with the Trimbalone Profile video series as part of the Vigorous PEDs YouTube playlist and discuss Trimbalone's progestogenic activity. But before we do, I just want to make a little bit of an apology because I repeatedly mispronounced prostaglandins in the previous video about trend cough and inflammation. So it's not the progestaglandins, it's prostaglandins derived from prostate. In the beginning, they thought prostaglandins came from the prostate, but they actually come from many of different tissues in the body. So again, it's not progestaglandins, but it's prostaglandins. And uh, I got a little bit confused there with the uh, progestogenic activity from Trembolone. So let's discuss that now with that out of the way. Again, my apologies. There's several different results that you get from the progestogenic activity from Trembolone. One of them being altered collagen synthesis. Now, there's several factors that contribute into collagen synthesis, especially in the skin. Estradiol plays a contributing role and progesterone plays a contributing role. And when people go on steroids and they add testosterone as a base, in most cases, unless you've been following this YouTube channel and you take DHEA and pregnenolone, raising your progesterone levels slightly, or keeping them in a favorable range, because normally HPTA is shut down, you add in the testosterone, part of that converts into estradiol, contributes to collagen synthesis in the skin, and all the other tremendous amount of a wide range of health benefits which are associated with estradiol. But progesterone usually goes down, again, unless you supplement with pregnenolone, which converts into progesterone, which keeps your skin very nice, very smooth. Again, the progesterone, how it contributes is it makes your skin a little bit thicker. And you see that with Trimbalone, besides the fact that it causes inflammation from the carrier oil, it, it doesn't contribute to skin thickness because of its progestogenic activity attaching to the progesterone receptors in the skin and replacing, replacing the reduced amount of progesterone that you have because HPTA is shut down. Now, Trimbolone is replacing some of this normal progester progesterone activity by binding to or attaching to the progesterone receptors. So you get a little bit of a thicker skin on Trimbolone. A lot of coaches don't realize this. I made a video about this with Tony Hooch three years ago. Unfortunately, I, I don't think that uh, my message uh, was aligned with his and he was afraid of the backlash about me saying that Trimbolone thickens the skin. So he never posted it. So here it is again for my audience, Trenbolone thickens the skin. And that's why it shouldn't be used at higher dosages during a contest prep when you haven't thinned your skin with prolonged dieting. Again, first contest you do, your skin might not be as thin unless you have, you know, thin skin genetics. Uh, some of the Arabs have thin skin genetics and they can get in tremendous shape regardless of the amount of Trenbolone they use. But most of the Caucasians, especially if they do only a couple diets and they've never been to, um, you know, 4% body fat, Trembolone prevents you from getting there. Yes, I said it, and I'm not going to retract it. And it's regardless of dose. So even if you do a low, a conservative dose of 225 milligrams Trembolone acetate per week, you will never ever get your skin as thin as it should be to be competitive if you do a couple shows in the beginning. Now, with more consecutive shows, you will thin your skin because you've been, uh, you know, dropping your estrogen more. You've had less restoration of the skin during your off season, um, you know, where you get estradiol and progesterone or, or trembolone like activity regarding collagen synthesis in the skin. So it will still thin over time. But this is one of the reasons why I prefer to have a, you know, a pretty high dose of Winstrol, for example, in the beginning when people haven't done so many shows, because Winstrol does thin the skin, especially when you contribute, especially when you combine that with an all fish diet, which restricts certain collagen types from your diet. And now your skin doesn't have the building blocks 
again, skin is made like bovine hide, for example, it's collagen type 1 and 3, right? But fish is only collagen type 1. So by restricting collagen type 3, you will catabolize the collagen type 3 in your skin. But the progestogenic activity of trembolone prevents some of that from happening. So your skin will never get as thin on trembolone as it does with Winstrol only. Now, again, the longer your diet, the more of a non-issue that appears to be. And again, for beginner clients that haven't done so many shows yet, trembolone is almost required because they lack the muscle maturity to be competitive. But honestly, if you think about the long term, Dieting without Trimbolone until you have the muscle maturity and the skin thickness to be competitive is probably the more sustainable route. And I, I, I'm sure that will go over everybody's head completely because they want the results yesterday. That's just my opinion as a coach, putting hundreds of people on stage and, and the large majority were in the top three. But there are some benefits of the progesterone receptor binding that Trimbolone can facilitate. And it has been proven in postmenopausal women where it was shown that testosterone and progesterone actually act as an anti-catabolic or an anabolic agent in the absence or the reduction of estradiol. So when you look at that scenario, in postmenopausal women that have a lower amount of estradiol and a reasonably higher amount of testosterone and progesterone, it's almost comparable to contusprep where estradiol is a little bit lower you get this progestogenic activity from the trimbolone or nandrolone or any other progestogenic anabolic androgenic steroids. In case of contest prep, estradiol is usually a little bit on the low side to promote overall fat loss. Testosterone in relation is, is pretty high <laughs> and you get a lot of progestogenic activity from the trimbolone resulting in an overall additional amount of anabolism and hypertrophy and the preservation of muscle tissue in a steep caloric deficit. And that's why progestogenic steroids are considerably more anabolic compared to testosterone derivatives or DHT derivatives, primabol and boldenone, for example. Trembolone, nandrolone, ment are considerably more anabolic on a milligram for milligram basis because they activate anabolism through the progesterone receptor pathway. Now, when you look at it logically, you would want progestogenic activity during a cutting phase and you want estrogenic activity during the off-season. So this makes nandrolone a little bit difficult because nandrolone, of course, promotes estradiol conversion of testosterone. And trembolone might actually also act as an aromatizing inhibitor, but it's certainly not as potent as primabolin or boldenone metabolites or other DHT derivatives. On most clients' blood work, estradiol levels are comparable on trembolone compared to before adding Trembolone in the mix. Then again, Trembolone is usually combined with Mastrone, and that's where the, you know, the anti estrogenic effect comes from, because Mastrone is probably the most potent uh, aromatized inhibitor or most potent DHT-based compound with aromatized inhibiting benefits of all the DHT derivatives. So the progestogenic activity could be a highly beneficial and anabolic effect of Trembolone in combination with its high androgenicity and high anabolic rate. Now, I'm not sure if the anabolic rating partially comes from its progestogenic activity, but when you combine it or when you compare it to nandrolone, I feel that the, the progestogenic activity of trembolone is way higher compared to nandrolone and ment, resulting in more anabolism. Now, the downside of progestogenic activity is uh, gynecomastia. Gynecomastia forms from high estradiol levels, it forms from high progesterone levels or it forms from high prolactin levels. If you have estradiol high, prolactin is low and progesterone is low, you'll still get gynecomastia. If estradiol is low but progesterone is high, you can also get gynecomastia. But if both are high, you get gynecomastia overnight. Now, what I did in the comprehensive guides to estrogens, progesterone and prolactin side and related side effects ebook is I made a comparative analysis of progesterone levels in um, women who are pregnant because in, in those cases estradiol promotes uh, breast formation in teenage women in the tanner stages four and five 
During pregnancy, progesterone levels rise and promote the formation of milk-producing tissue within the breasts. And then after pregnancy, prolactin levels increase, resulting in the actual milk production and secretion, which might last several months to years. Now, there's a certain range of progesterone that occurs during pregnancy. And what I did in the ebook is found out the relative dose of trembolone and nandrolone and meant you would need to run per week to get the same amount of progesterone receptor binding, which is comparable to pregnancy in women. Now, considering that nandrolone has a much lower binding affinity to the progesterone receptor than trembolone, I think trembolone has a relative binding affinity of about 70-75% that of progesterone, but nandrolone has 20%, only 20% binding affinity relative to progesterone, yeah, for the progesterone receptor. So because trembolone is such a much almost comparable, 75% binding affinity compared to progesterone, the dose that you need to run trimbolone is considerably lower than nandrolone before you start to see symptoms of gynecomastia formation. Now, in the real world, that doesn't really play out. I'm sure people have experienced that with nandrolone, the potential for gynecomastia formation or a little bit of gynecomastia symptoms like water retention and, and puffiness and tenderness is much more common for a comparable dose of nandrolone to trimbolone. It might already happen at 200 milligrams of nandrolone per week but it's almost unheard of that it happens on 200 milligrams of trembolone per week. In the real world, nandrolone will induce gynecomastia or gynecomastia symptoms much earlier, again, because it promotes estradiol conversion. So it might, the prolactin levels might be in range, but the estradiol levels might be higher on nandrolone, especially after adding it. Let's say your estradiol levels were in range, you're only on testosterone, everything is smooth, and your blood work is perfect. You add in the nandrolone, 200 milligrams, 500, whatever dose you prefer, and the estradiol conversion goes sky high. You get 20% relative binding affinity to the progesterone receptors, and you got full-blown gynecomastia overnight. Luckily, that doesn't happen with trembolone, even though the relative binding affinity is uh, much more potent compared to nandrolone, simply because it doesn't promote estradiol conversion. So keep that in mind, but it can definitely occur because this progestogenic activity of trembolone being more potent than nandrolone might send your prolactin levels sky high. Now, what I tell all my clients is, listen, you want to start with trembolone maybe four weeks from now during a contest prep. Please introduce vitamin B6, P5P well ahead of time to increase overall dopamine concentrations within the brain and again, dopamine concentrations downregulate prolactin production. So that's the pathway of k or bromocyphine or promipexol. They increase dopamine concentrations in the brain tremendously, resulting in less prolactin or almost non-existent prolactin secretion, regardless of the amount of trimbolone or nandrolone or ment that's within the bloodstream. Now, vitamin B6, P5P, if you started early enough before introducing trembolone at a moderate dose, you shouldn't see tremendous prolactin surges. Now, again, prolactin will contribute to gynecomastia, but it will also contribute to severe libido issues. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the term decadic. Decadic. Babe, can you stop editing that out so I can get my point across? Decadic. Obelisk. Okay. <laughs> so... We're familiar with the term, right? And it's because nandrolone promotes uh, so much estradiol conversion, it's progesterogenic activity, producing a lot of prolactin as well. And now your complete, your refractory rate or your ability to get an erection is severely reduced or completely diminished to the point of, um, yeah, wanting to get of nandrolone ASAP. Now, this can also occur with trembolone, but it appears that it's not as common as with nandrolone. Again, nandrolone is mostly an off-season compound, and trembolone is usually a contest prep or cutting phase compound. Considering that with trembolone, estradiol levels are slightly reduced, its progestogenic activity, albeit higher, usually results in a little bit of less prolactin levels. Again, because most people understand that they need to run vitamin B6 P5P or k alongside trembolone and DHT derivatives are added to trembolone as well, like a primobolin, a winstrol or a masterone. 
which, you know, tickles your DHT libido pleasure center as well. So, trained obelisk is not as common as decadent. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of gay burger line to reduce prolactin levels again, because it's, it's re- I mean, it's been associated with so many negative health ramifications and the most predominant one being left ventricle heart enlargement, which is, uh, you know, a very deleterious health effect that might be irreversible if you decide to use Kebergelein on Trimbalone cycle. Please add in Nabivalol. Yeah, so you're, you're one compound and a second compound and a third compound. Again, but Nabivalol and Ubiquinol and Shilajit fulvic acid might help with heart modeling or prevent left ventricle heart enlargement simply by reducing the heart rate and reducing blood pressure. And again, it's the left ventricle that pumps the heart out through the aorta. And when your blood pressure is increased due to Trembolone or because of its uh, dopaminergic effect of uh, cabergoline or bromocyphrine or primipexol on the heart, yeah, you, you create a harder contraction. So you need to bring that down a little bit with Nabivalol. Personally, I would prefer you not to take Trembolone so you don't require cabergoline. And Abivalol has a myriad of other health benefits. So, you know, I'll leave that up to you. You can find a video about Nabivalol right here. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested about progestogenic activity, consider buying the comprehensive guide to estrogens, progesterones, prolactin, and related side effects. You can find that ebook and several other ebooks on my website. On my website, you can also find a ton of articles which are already published for free for your reading, enjoyment, and your overall knowledge accrual. If you're looking for personalized advice, you can find the rates to my services there as well, whether you're interested in coaching, consultations, or personalized advice by email. Feel free to pass through the shop and see which ebook might be interesting to you. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next Trimbaloni Sandwich video.